There's a beach off the coast of South Carolina where swimming is prohibited. It exists between two small islands, and the force of the current running between them can multiply at a moment's notice. Dozens have died there over the past decade. Whether it was the result of a bet that went wrong, a show-off attempting to display his strength, or simply someone who missed reading the numerous warning signs on the way to the sand. But I haven't died yet, though I've only been twice. I was born and raised near the Pacific. By the time I had started high school, I had already been through three surfboards, but the waves of the Atlantic aren't nearly as big, except for one, that is, one that puts even those in the Pacific to shame. And it only shows up at one particular beach, the no swimming beach, when the conditions are just right. When the tide is going out and the moon is full and the temperature of the water is about to flip, Something magical happens between those two islands. Something about the unique geological formation that creates the perfect wave. I remember hearing the rumors and watching the weather for the conditions to line up. And I had waited overnight from my car, parked in the sand, two years ago, seeing the ocean recede and swell up into a glorious crescent. The moonlight illuminating the foam over the murky water and I knew one day I would have to capture it. So the next year, I returned with my board and waited. Wading out into the sea, the water seeped through my wetsuit. The beach was empty. Besides the crashing water, it was dead quiet. No frogs croaked, nor birds chirped. It was just me. Me and the ocean. Then I saw it forming in the distance as the water level sank like a draining bowl. My eyes widened as I kicked forward. It roared towards me and I prepared to ride it, but just that second, my foot caught on something. A tangle of undergrowth or a branch. I kicked, but the object held firm. Something sharp, biting into my ankle like briars. Above me, the wave grew taller and I kicked again, unsuccessfully, until the water crashed down upon me and I was ripped free. I tumbled in the darkness, slamming through the thick and slimy undergrowth until I was regurgitated on the beach, gasping for breath, water trickling out of my nose and salt stinging my eyes, with blood oozing from my leg and several long scratches that eventually scarred over several months later after continual infections. I had missed my chance until the next year. That year, I kept my feet higher up, planing out as the wave surged forward, and I caught it just in time, watching as the water pulled away from the beach to feed the wave, leaving just enough water to see the shadows underneath of what I once thought was seaweed. Hands. Thousands of hands extended upwards like plants from the sand, their fingers open and searching, only emerging from the elbow up, with nails that reflected the moonlight like scales. And as the water pulled away, they burrowed deeper into the sand, only to return back to full height under the water's murky protection. Some clutched entire fish, some held driftwood, and others held objects too difficult to discern, but not too difficult to infer. From my vantage point alone, I could see them, with the water at its lowest point and looking directly down. And they reached up towards me, as my surfboard wobbled and coasted forward until it ground against the shore, the fins digging into the sand. Turning around, I could see they were what I had once mistaken for the dark outline of seaweed, rising and falling with each crest, waiting, grasping, and looking at my leg's scars, five streaks of shining tissue. I then realized that it wasn't the currents that was pulling swimmers under at the beach.